Member for Vancouver Point Grey. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. I will endeavour to do my best in speaking about supportive housing, which is an issue I feel quite passionate about. And I'd like to uh, illustrate my concern about the government's record on supportive housing with the uh, uh, Maple Ridge, uh, the ongoing controversy in Maple Ridge. It was in March of 2016 that a homeless camp began to form out front of the Maple Ridge Salvation Army. Uh, first, the number of people on the site was about a dozen. But by June, Mayor Nicole Reed and the Maple Ridge City Council called for an emergency meeting on the issue because the camp had grown to 32 tents. Now, there were a number of people present at that emergency meeting. There was the member for Maple Ridge Pitt Meadows, the member for Maple Ridge Mission, and the assistant for the former member of parliament for Maple Ridge. Now, following that meeting, on June 25th, the member for Maple Ridge Pitt Meadows told the Maple Ridge Pitt Meadows News that the Minister for Housing had made him the point person for the provincial government on the tent city, and I think the people of Maple Ridge were relieved that finally some action was being taken. Well, it was August before the member for Maple Ridge Pitt Meadows and BC Housing announced funding for a temporary shelter at an old mattress store, saying that long-term supportive housing would be coming soon. Two months later, this is a full six months after the beginning of the crisis, 30 people were moved off of Cliff Avenue and into the old mattress store. Now, Honourable Speaker, it's important to illustrate the concern about supportive housing with a very concrete example of 30 people who were unable to be housed by the city in regular rental housing because they needed supports. They were so ill with mental health issues and addiction issues. They need health care. So their old neighbours on Cliff Avenue who had given people water, who had been patient through the entire six-month crisis, were told the shelter would be temporary and that there would be supportive housing coming. And the member for Maple Ridge Pitt Meadows took full credit for the housing of the people in the mattress store. He said, in this place, I've been working on the issue for months. And the member for Chilliwack, actually, insisted that was true. He demanded an apology from me in, in member statements for saying the member for Maple Ridge, uh, Ridge Pitt Meadows was absent on the issue. And he said, he talked about the fine work the member for Maple Ridge Pitt Meadows had been doing to find a solution for the homeless camp on Cliff Avenue. And in February, just two months ago, the member for Chilliwack said the same thing, that the member was, quote, working diligently behind the scenes. So what has happened with this government's diligent work on supportive housing in Maple Ridge? Again, Honourable Speaker, important to illustrate the concern about supportive housing with an actual example. Three weeks ago, just one week before the mattress store shelter was supposed to close, the member for Maple Ridge Pitt Meadows and the Minister for Housing announced the plan they'd come up with. They were going to move the people out of the old mattress store into an old hotel that the government would be buying with public money. Now, 30 people with serious mental health and addiction issues in hotel rooms, the community literally couldn't believe it. Community members in Maple Ridge had read the news that I've read, that many of us have read, shocking news, that one in four people who die in supportive housing in British Columbia, their bodies are not discovered for two days. That is the level of support in supportive housing in British Columbia. Now, there's a, a person who's been in the media on this, a woman named Christine Harris, the mother of a man named Lindsay Long, demanding better supports for people in supportive housing. After her son suffered for days in his supportive housing room, three days, with an infection in his heart and he died, he wasn't discovered for three more days after he died in a so-called supportive housing facility in this province because staff funding levels are so low. So Maple Ridge City Council, knowing about this issue, said, if this is the government's plan, if this is the member for Maple Ridge Pitt Meadows, if this is his plan, there are going to have to be outstanding health care supports, mental health supports in this facility. They felt, and understandably so, that people with serious mental health and addiction issues should be in a health care setting, not in hotel rooms. And then, when it really sank in that the plan was to move the temporary shelter from a mattress store into an old hotel, the people of Maple Ridge were outraged and held protests. And in response to that outrage, Honourable Speaker, the member for Maple Ridge, Pitt Meadows, took to Facebook. He said, quote, he was not part of the negotiations. And quote, the only people involved were Maple Ridge and BC Housing, unquote. Well, Honourable Speaker, either this government is responsible for supportive housing in Maple Ridge, or it's not. Either the Minister for Housing is responsible for supports in the housing in this province, or he's not. The problem for the people of Maple Ridge isn't the ducking and weaving of the politicians here. It's that after a year since this crisis started, we're no further ahead. And this is emblematic, Honourable Speaker, of the status 
of supportive housing across the province. This isn't just Maple Ridge, it's Abbotsford, it's Victoria, it's Terrace, it's Prince George. Whoever's making these decisions, they've now canceled the plan for the hotel and there's no other plan. There was five million supposed to go into the purchase of the hotel. I can give the member credit, as, as I think I should, that it's been increased to $15 million, but that's just on paper. There's no plan for this, uh, these people who are in this uh, ma old mattress store. The deadline for the temporary mattress store shelter has been extended now to July 1st. So one year after the crisis began, still no plan for solving it. Now, Honourable Speaker, I hope on both sides of this House we can come together and say that people with serious mental health and addiction issues should see health care supports that they deserve, the community deserves to know that people who are so sick are being looked after. Because there was a toddler, Honourable, Honourable Speaker, who was pricked with a syringe, an abandoned syringe in Maple Ridge, so people are really upset and sensitive about this issue. And it's time for everyone in this House to step up and recognize that we need to do better than temporary short-term solutions. That is a question for all of us in this House, that is a question for the member for Maple, Maple Ridge Pitt Meadows, and it is the question for the Minister of Housing and the Cabinet and I hope there is an answer here today, Honourable Speaker.